All right, I'm gonna be out here doing a little squirrel hunting. And I'm gonna set up a little uh, shelter with my GI poncho. It's really nothing too special, but it kind of does, it kind of breaks the wind a little bit because it's a little windy out here. If you're gonna do something like this on public lands, make sure you have blaze orange on. And I really wouldn't recommend too much with your shelter, uh, even doing that, unless if you ha have flags of all giant, just so in case other hunters come along. I'm gonna have to make my own stakes because those are with my tarp shelter, or my tarp set up, and I decided I didn't want to go heavy, obviously. So stick around and we'll, I'll be back. Now with me making these stakes, I know they're not going to be the prettiest things. Uh, if this is a long term, you're going to actually want to take time of doing it, you know, or more time. I'm just going to be using some crap, uh, crappy sticks right here. And then I'm going to kind of make points on it and then make a nice little cut in there so I can tie my paracord. I usually use bank line, but in my path today, I have I, I only have paracord, so. But it, it'll work, even as you can tell, it's kind of windy, you can kind of see it behind me, and I'm sure you can hear, hear the wind. So, once again, you know, this is just a quick little stake, nothing major. It's nothing pretty, but it will get you by in a survival situation for sure for the for the night if you have to make your own stakes. So obviously, all I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take take a, a scrap piece of stick off the ground, and I'm going to start forming a point. I usually come up about an inch. And this is probably a good six inch stake, which is good for out here right now. I'll make a longer, a longer slice here and a shorter one here, and then, and then a longer one there too, and then a shorter one. And just keep forming your point. You don't, ha it doesn't have to be um, super pointy because what'll happen is that you'll break off your stake here, and you. Or, or your uh, your point or whatever. And that's all I'm doing here. Something like that will work just fine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down about an inch from the opposite side and I'm going to use something that I can put the the steak on. Uh, hopefully this all come in good for you guys. It's kind of hard holding a camera and doing this. And I'm just going to come in there about a quarter of a way, like so, just straight down. And then I'm going to come on an angle and try to meet up with that and pick that out. And I'm going to repeat, like so, sorry for the camera, it's a lot easier if I just get a piece of, and then pick it out. Like I said, it's kind of difficult to do this and hold in a camera. Basically, I made a notch right in here, which I'm going to clean it up a little bit without uh, filming it. This is just so you get a general idea. If I can find something where I can put my camera on, we'll go from there. Okay, I couldn't find a, a better prop for my camera. But as you can see, I just made some notches right in here. And then I have my points. So this way, and then I kind of trimmed off the top here, so when I find something to pound it down. Now, obviously there's two different ways you can do this. You can use your notch, 
like if the steak was here you can use something to pound on your knife or you can do what I did and just kind of rock in there and then come on an angle down all right here's just another little quick shelter with the GI poncho if you watch my previous videos I always have a poncho and all my kits you can either make a hooch shelter or you just come up and rig something up like like so basically all I did was I staked down the back as I had to make my own stakes because I didn't have no stakes with me I prefer to carry stakes obviously but they, somehow they ended up in a different bag so I staked down the backs I tied the hood just in case if it rained but it's not raining today it's just kind of windy and I got a lot of stuff falling from the trees up from above you know like just little branches and stuff and leaves this way it kind of protects me a little bit took the corners ran into the tree just like I do with all my other uh, shelters and I kind of wrapped it on the tree in a spider nest wrap and then tied it off with a Prusik knot and then obviously you would put your your stake or your stick under the shelter light then you prop it up as you can see it's pretty roomy if I had stakes with me or made better stakes I would be easily be able to stay overnight mostly in the spring and summer and then I always have an extra poncho with me some guy in the uh, dirt time group he recommended that to me you know that he always has two so I always have two ponchos with me now and that's pretty much in all my kits as you can see I just got done eating lunch here and I'm just small game hunting just kind of sitting back and chill a little bit and I'll give you a quick view side view of this as you can see I can always adjust this and have it have it to go over more if need be it's just another little quick shelter for a GI poncho I would always keep one in your pack too so for now I'm just gonna sit sit back and see if any tree rats go running around running around that's why I got the shotgun with me as I sit here uh, just scanning the trees and everything I just noticed something with this uh, poncho that I bought it's one it's one from like Rothko or whatever you want to call them you usually don't buy stuff from them because it's junk and just to prove to you how much of junk it is if you look right over my shoulder there you can see that this is the first time I've used it and obviously I didn't do that because this is still pretty light it's not too tight I got one there and I have another one there and then same with the other side over here I've noticed some bigger ones right over here so the point is is that if you're gonna go out and get gear mostly you know if you need it for survival buy good quality stuff and get out there and try your gear out I cannot ever stress that enough because to me this here will not last long at all this is almost a, uh, a throwaway I'm sure I'll get a couple uses usages out of it but if you're gonna buy kind of the lower end quality of stuff you know I mean, your life could be depend on it, or even if you if you do field craft, bushcraft, you know, for fun, you want you want the things to last. So I just wanted to point that out. Since you're sitting here and watching this video, and I'm so-called hunting, which I haven't seen any, I had a couple questions off of uh, my dirt time, and one of them was, what kind of camouflage I prefer. Well, to me, that all depends on the seasons. If it's uh, summertime, and as you can see, this is near end of summer, it's all greenish. 
I prefer woodland. A lot of people are multicam fans, which I am a fan too, but I prefer multicam more in the fall instead of when it's so green all. Um, to me, probably the best camouflage, mostly in a survival situation, like, uh, you know, the world is going to hell, would probably be black. Just because you have your nighttime where it's dark out. And also, as you can see, there's shadows all over the place. Our environment is always naturally black. It doesn't matter if it's winter, if it's summer, fall, what have you. Black is probably one of the most common colors out there. And that's what I would prefer if it was a bug out and I, I want to be on scene and I have to survive day and night. Obviously there's other good camouflage out there, kind of like the jacket that I have. You know, this is just a wool Columbia jacket. And to me this is probably a perfect winter um, camouflage. You basically have to look at your environment and pick out what would work best for you. But I always dull my camouflage out because when you buy it, even if it's real tree, um, multicam, what, what have you, it's gonna always be just slightly bright. So I just take a, I just hit it with spray paint, just a nice little mist, just a quick mist like that. You know, just to sort of knock off some of the shine off of it. This jacket I didn't have to because it kind of came that way. You know, so it's kind of a pick and choose thing. But for camouflage, I would probably go with woodland in the summer, multicam in the early spring and fall and even winter. Or you can just go and get something that's not so military like and just pick out something at your local store that would blend in pretty well if you're looking for the whole camouflage thing or you can just stick with black. So I just thought I would answer that question real quick. Okay, well, I just got done packing up and I just wanna leave this video with a couple things to, uh, for me to bring up. Uh, first of all, my videos, they're pretty much just quick and dirty. They're not supposed to be all pretty. There's a lot of videos out there and a lot of people that, you know, if you really want to get all fancy, you can watch, you know, and I highly recommend watching uh, Dave Canterbury's, you know, Wilderness Outfitters. Definitely, you will definitely get a lot from there. I even get a lot of my ideals from there. And then I go out and I get some dirt time in and try to figure that out, you know, or try to come up with my own system. Eventually, I'm going to go more into, you know, more details of whys and whys nots, but I started off with this many years ago, and I decided the best approach was something that I know that works. That's why I'm a big advocate to always test your, your gear, test your skills, and keep testing. You know, um... If you're brand new to this, you know, just get cheap stuff. You don't have to go out there and get real expensive stuff. But as you progress, then you just build on to your kit. Try not to have your kit full of a bunch of miscellaneous gear. You want to keep it multi-purpose. And it'll save you uh, a lot of weight on your back. You might as well carry all that up, up, up in your head, you know, instead of all in your pack. Uh, hopefully with like with the shelter wise I'm pretty confident that would have gotten me by it easily um, I'm sure there's going to be some survival experts out there because it seems like there's a lot on the web they will be like no you can't make a stake that way no you can't put up a shelter that way that won't work well I'm here to tell you that it will work it was quick and dirty um, I'm not here to prove myself to anyone. I'm here just kind of passing on what I've learned and what and how I got started because I learned from watching other people. So 
you can those people those little survivalist trolls experts whatever you want to call them I just laugh at your comments I really don't care about your bullfire because in a real survival situation I don't think you would even make it just by the way that you guys talk you guys would be like breakfast to me but for the people that are getting into this or people that are just following me don't forget to get out there and get some dirt time in you know that's the only way you'll learn so once again thank you for watching don't forget about dirt time